This is by far the best way to create a picture-in-picture -picture effect in DaVinci Resolve. Instead of using the usual adjustment clips, there's a better, more dynamic way that not only saves time, but gives you more control. It's called reference compositions. Stick around as I break down each step from setting up the composition to more advanced techniques. What is a reference composition? It allows you to create a single fusion composition in the media pool and link multiple clips to it. Any changes that you make will only reflect on the linked clips. Unlike adjustment clips, which will affect everything. Let's get started. In your DaVinci Resolve project on the edit page, let's drop the clips that we're going to use. So we've got our face cam on track number two and we've got our screen recording on track number one. It's very important to set it up in this order so that your face cam is on top. So from there, it's pretty straightforward. Click on the face cam clip on the top clip, uh, right click on that and go to create reference composition and then name your clip. I'm just going to leave it on Joe Talking Head. You'll see in the media pool, it created this reference comp. There's a little icon there. It means that that clip is now linked to the reference comp. Any changes that we make in the Fusion page will affect this linked clip. To go to the Fusion page, there's two ways to do that. You can right click on the clip and go to open in Fusion or else you can double click on the reference composition in the media pool. Let's add a transform node on this line here. If you go to the top menu in your Fusion page, you'll see there's a transform there. Now we can do some changes. Let's adjust the size. Let's put it on the top left corner here. Let's go back to the edit page and then see all the changes that we've made. If we add any new clips on our timeline, let's say if we add another clip like this. Go to the clip that's not linked, right click on it and just say link to reference composition and both clips are now affected. You can link as many clips as you want to the reference composition and all your changes will apply. This is super useful because you don't have to create the same effect twice. Let's further refine this. Let's go back into the fusion page. Let's delete this transform node and add a, a different type of transform node. Press control and spacebar on your keyboard and the select tool will open then search for transform choose the one without the xf in brackets because this one allows you to crop the image let's zoom it out a bit under image adjustment just enable this crop section here and then we can crop our image you can make the edges round let's position this one to the left corner down here if you go to templates edit effects and scroll almost all the way down you'll see there's an outer stroke. Select that. Make sure it's after the transform. Now you've got this white border around it. I just want to pull it back a little bit and choose the Gaussian one. This will make it nice and subtle and you can add like a nice drop shadow. Let's go back to the edit page. If you want to unlink any clip from the reference composition, you can right click on it and just go to unlink reference composition. You can delete this reference composition by going into your media pool and say, remove selected clip, delete, and all your clips in your timeline will revert back to normal. If you want any help with your DaVinci Resolve projects, I also offer a one-on-one -on -one consultation calls. I'll help you fine tune your workflow and speed up your editing process. If there's anything that you're stuck with, we'll find a solution and work through that together. If that sounds like something that you need, check out the link in the description. This is where it gets super interesting. Let's say you want to create an animation that looks like this and you want to save it for future use. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how. Let's drag the two photos that we want to use on top of each other. Select both the photos, right click and go to create reference composition. All right, let's go back into the fusion page. Now you'll see that both your photos are media in one and media in two. If you want to know which one is which, go to the bottom of this node. You'll see there's two little... I don't know, circles there. If you click on the left view, it will open on the left view. Or alternatively, you can click and drag, just put it on the left view. Let's go to media in two. Uh, press control space on your keyboard and select the transform node that we used earlier. Let's transform it and let's crop this one. I'm just gonna put this media in one off for now. Let's put the edge rounding all the way to the end. That looks pretty cool. Now let's switch the media in one on. Paste an instance of this transform node. So what that will do is any changes that we make to one of them will affect both. So to do that, copy this transform node by right clicking copy on this line paste instance. Then we can go to the merge node 
node, merge one, move it up and merge two, and then let's move them around. Let's add an outer stroke. If we go to templates, edit, effects, go all the way to the bottom again, and then outer stroke. So let's add it to the bottom one. I like Gaussian, so it just makes it a little subtle. And then let's do the same thing. We'll paste another instance of that. Just copy that node and then paste instance. Now both of them look exactly the same. Let's animate these so they spin in and then the way to do this is go to your transform node. So let's go to frame number 15 and on the zoom axis, let's add a keyframe there. Let's go back to frame number zero and then zoom all the way out or put it on, put the zoom on zero so that you don't see anything there. To further refine this, go open your spline window and select all your transforms and press this little button so you can see your keyframes in one view. Select all the keyframes and go down here to the smooth button and it will smooth out your animations automatically. You can further refine them if you want. With that, we can do a nice rotate. I'll go back to frame 15 and I'll add a keyframe on my rotate control. Then I'll go back to frame zero and then just pull back the rotate about let's do minus 100 somewhere there add a text layer go to the menu on top here and it should add a text in between just type in verses you can choose whatever font you like i'll make it black and then let's animate the text as well so as soon as these ones pop up after frame 15 we'll add a keyframe on size and then after they pop up we'll just increase the size but this is pretty nice i'm just going to stick with that let's sell the effect a little bit more with a camera shake but let's choose this this one and then we'll pull back the motion scale and the speed scale now we can go back to our edit page anything that you add to this will be affected it's very important to make sure that the clips that you choose are the same resolution otherwise it will look weird all right so let's add a background let's go to generators in the toolbox let's use this comic speed lines that's a nice little animation you can use that reference comp in the future to save this reference comp in your power bin you just drag and drop it into that bin so this will show up in all our future projects you never have to recreate a reference comp for every single project the only thing is if you make any changes to the reference comp the changes will be made on the comp in your media pool and not the one in the power bins because the power bins makes a copy of the reference comp into your media pool let's take it a step further and create some custom transitions using using reference comp. So I've got some stock footage here. I'm just gonna drag them in. So we'll use three images. I'll drag them one track to the top. So we've got our bottom track open. This will be our background. We will use them to create our transition. Highlight all three of them and then right click and create reference composition. So I'll call it slides. All the clips are in the reference comp. So let's open it in the fusion page. And now you'll see that we've got three images media in one media in two and media in three just create some space for them so media in three is the top clip media in two is the middle clip and media in one is the bottom clip i know it sounds a little bit confusing but that's just the way fusion works control space and search for crop on the crop menu enable the keep centered function and then we can crop it down to six 40. That's the exact size if you want to divide the screen by three. From here on, it's pretty straightforward. We can just copy and paste an instant for both of the other two images. So we have three crops and they all link together. Now to move the other two to the side, we'll just add a transform node to the top node and the bottom node. So we can move them to the side. To animate our clips, let's go to frame number 15 again. And on our merge node, let's go to the center, the center x and y let's enable a keyframe on there and go to the merge 2 enable that keyframe they're all on frame 15 the first clip will come in on frame 15 so let's go back to frame 0 and pull the y axis up and then after frame 15 we'll add another 15 frame so the next one is frame 30 and go back to frame 15 on merge number 2 let's pull it down we'll go another 15 
long frames. So 30 plus 15 is 45, right? And then go to merge number three, add the last keyframe there, and then go back to frame 30 and pull it up. Right, so this is our animation. To further refine it a little bit, go to the spline, enable all everything and just select this button so you can see the view of all animations and then select all the keyframes and press the smooth button. Okay, so if we go back to the media page, we can see our transition. If we add something to the background, let's do this one. So let's move the animation up a bit. Let's play this one and then there's a transition. The interesting part about this is you can take away these images at the bottom and add new images in there and it will automatically be added to the slide. You can swap these images around. Let's put this one at the top, this one at the middle and you've got a custom slide transition made for you. Now you know how to use reference compositions to create your own picture-in-picture -picture compositions, your own custom animations and custom transitions. Give it a shot, let me know what you think. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.